which I call 21st Century Writing Skills blog. And the title of this is actually pretty important. Um, 21st Century Writing Skills. You know, maybe some of you might be wondering, well, why do I need blog to introduce blogging in the classroom? What if my students are already pretty good at writing? Well, there are a few reasons. And one of them is I want to highlight 21st Century Writing Skills. You know, we are in the 21st century, and students, when they go into the workplace, I know that seems a little bit distant, but when they go into the workplace, they will be using new technologies like blogging, social networking, etc., in their work and in their future. And so um, schools can really do their part by preparing students to become the leaders of tomorrow using things like blogging, 21st century writing skills. And this presentation I actually designed for students about blogging, um, but I think it has some points in here that can be useful to teachers too. So, <coughs> on, um, I first have students define what a blog is. I have the standard definition and then what a blog is to them, what they think of blogs. And a blog is more than a journal. I emphasize this, but a blog can be a real gathering place for different types of publications like journals, newsletters, stories, poems, artwork, photographs, videos, and sounds. And uh, one thing that I also tell students is that blogging gives you a chance to really publish your work and get it out to a wider audience. So maybe you have some really talented students who write very well, and you want a place for them to be able to po post that work. And a blog is a great place for them to do so. Uh, another thing that's useful about the blog is that it allows you to really save student work. If any of you have seen the shadowy depths of the average student's binder, you may reconsider giving them back that masterpiece writing uh, assignment without typing it up onto the blog. Uh, so here are some reasons to blog. It looks like it got cut off a little bit by work, but expressing feelings, gaining recognition, builds teamwork when students are working together for a common goal on the blog, and that's really helpful improving and writing it. That's what said publishing and creates reflection. So students are able to also receive feedback um, from fellow classmates, from the teacher, on the blog about their writing and some things that they can improve and what the audience really likes. We blog to share and learn from our experiences. And I have what's the blog look like. I have my own blog and I show that students. Blogs can have many different shapes and forms. I emphasize this because students like to write about different things and so um, blogs can be unique and different. They will have different purposes. Uh, so, for instance, informing, entertaining, persuading, and evaluating. Like life itself, learning is about evaluation. Evaluating ideas, evaluating sources of information, and evaluating your own progress. <coughs> Blogging lets us evaluate the world around us in a constructive way. When you write a blog, you may evaluate your experiences. So instead of having students say, oh, I went to the mall, it was kind of cool to their friend, then you can have them type up on the blog, the other day I went to Redmond Town Center, the sprawling outdoor development in the middle of Redmond. This is actually a real place, although I wouldn't call it quite sprawl. Um, and it smelled like moldy cheeseburgers and industrial cleaning fluid. And I, despite the smell, had a great time um, window shopping at The Gap and Macy's. So maybe you can have students get into more detail like that. I'm hoping that the local mall would not have an industrial cleaning fluid and moldy cheeseburger smell. But when students are able to really um, experience that and then put it on the blog about their experience, describing the senses, then you're helping them improve the writing skills and fine-tuning their perception of um, experiences. So, for instance, today I went on a field trip to Saltwater State Park, and I learned about marine biology, and there's a spot like this, I had a great time, and you can have students maybe expand on that, you can have feedback um, from other classmates, and then it really helps students fine-tune that writing process. To understand blogging better, you can evaluate others' blogs, you could maybe have blogs from other classmates, from other schools even, and taking a look at those and saying what you like, and what you um, think maybe need some improvement. And then I also talk to about starting a blog. So those are just a few reasons to blog gain recognition, publication, saving work. Also, um, blogs uh, can be really, really safe because you can actually choose who you want to view the blog. Um, and then 
it's a really good point where you can put work on there, have other classmates view it, give feedback for students to improve their writing. So, for instance, one that uh, I have used before is ePals, and then they actually have a. Um, anybody familiar with them? Okay, well, they basically offer blogs for schools that. Um, and then also email systems that are approved by teachers, etc. And then you can just set those up for a classroom. So, things like that um, can be done. Um, safe blogs where you can. So I can use it, etc. So there are different ways to do that without too much complication. And another reason to have a blog. When I am reading with intent, I evaluate each new piece of information more carefully. I think about how I can incorporate it in my story or other project to post on the blog. Right to learn, 